this generation need wise men this generation needs wise women this generation needs godly men this generation need godly women this generation has lost it because men ride on honor men ride on it it's enough for him to have the boldness to do what he is doing if you become a failure in life you need an understanding a godly and a wise spouse to survive in your failure in your success you need an understanding a godly and a wise spouse without this no matter the height you get to in sources, you may come back to failure. No matter the circumstance of your life, you need these things. If you don't have an understanding wise spouse, I tell you, you won't enjoy your sources. You won't do. Your sources will be per just a short time. Many people who are following all kinds of things, eh? they have very unrefined spouse in the house and the, the kind of treatment that is being given them to shock you if you are able to tell a woman that she is ugly you have no idea what you have done to her you are not attractive to me anymore you are not that you are not that you are a foolish woman you are that you are killing her but there is a generation of men arising who are not afraid to look at a woman and tell her you are very ugly and foolish. You are worse than an animal. And other women too are lampasting other men. And today marriages are something that is not even attractive anymore. It's not worth spending money to enter in. There are many young people walking about. Genuinely, they have lost the desire for marriage because they have seen the experiences of their friends. Sometimes when they are in the office, their friend will show them the message their wives sent to them and they will read the insult. After reading the insult, they will start judging their partners in relationship. Say, so am I also going to enter into marriage to face this thing? And unfortunately, probably you two in the relationship, you got angry and you tell, tell your mind. What you don't know is that they are putting you in the shoes of someone else. They said, we need God to work on us and to raise understanding godly and wise spouse. There is no marriage that a problem will not come. What saves the problems are the wisdom of the spouse that you are married to. What saves the problem? Every, even if you become successful, successful, sometimes the success is a problem. Because there are times that your success will not will take the time you have to spend with your spouse away. Sometimes the glory of your destiny is a, is a problem at home, but a beauty outside. And it will take an understanding, a wise and a godly spouse to manage you and your blessings. Can you imagine you have an international job right now and you have to travel every month out of the country. The international job is successful. You are blessed. You are paid in foreign currency. But you have another mountain to overcome. That is when the job demands that you go to three countries a month. That is when you will test the wisdom, the godliness, and the understanding of the spouse. He can deal with you through you send your resignation letter. Or if you keep the job, then you lose the marriage. The only savior of a bright future is to have an understanding, a godly and a wise spouse. Mercy. <laughs> When your, your partner can tell you to hell with your position, to hell with the job you do, to hell with that, to hell, I will leave you to hell with this. And one now will say, why you mistake? You are going to pray that God give me somebody who understands life. 
somebody who understands my purpose in life. You can go and marry a woman, he'll tell you, because I don't want my breast to shift. So I can give birth to just one. Yes, I'm telling you. A woman can tell a husband that don't touch my breast. A woman will tell you that if I give birth to two or three, my stomach, so I, I, I won't give birth. Let's go and adapt. God must hand into your hands a godly understanding and wise spouse. And that from sir, what people are going through. There is a woman that charges the husband for every sex. Every sexual encounter comes with a charge. There are women that go to contract with their husbands. Every child has must come with one car. Every how every child must come with one house or one car. They charge. If things don't come before your table, you think life is normal. When people start bringing their cases to you, that is when you realize that this world, and when the Bible says it, it lies in darkness, is massive. And many principles, the kind of principles people are carrying in life, eh? they are not normal. Oh. If God does not help you, you go and marry something. They will never let you see in relationship. Until you have done, I do, and everybody has celebrated you, and you go. That is where you see the real deal. A man that before he confronts you, he thinks about God. A woman that before he deals with you, he thinks about how God feels before he deals with you. Now, Kofar Dibia, beautiful girl came to me. Beautiful girl. It is after marriage he realized that the, the, the husband is a gay. We prayed one prayer, secret, secret. Then he went to find out all the messages and the pictures and everything on the man's phone. See, Papa, I have all of them here. And no more bimudium walk or two. The things people have put, the covenant people have put their head into it. It will shock you. And all these people married from church. The guy just wanted to marry for everybody to see he's of age. He has married. There are men that have married lesbians. To marry you into a room. Then later go and pursue. We, had, we shared a testimony like that some time ago. The lady is a lesbian who is married but was traveling to Takradi or so. To go and sleep with other ladies. Until God hit her on half hour. She repented. That's why I always tell people who are not married, congratulations. You have every chance to engage God till you find the right person. To some of you, you started praying on half hour and your boy came and said, I've left you. You don't know what left you. There are people, if they left you, it's not a human being that left you, it's tears that left you. There are people, if they break up with you, it is a curse that broke up with you. Sometimes when you pray, God, break this curse over my life. Break this curse over my life. What he's breaking is a human being. <laughs> and by the time you finish prayer, then they send you a, a, a message. I can't continue with you again. What you don't know is that the problem you are to pray that God leave me. Problems are not, are not in vacuums. They come as people. You can pray this prayer right now. By tomorrow, your boyfriend will leave you. Tomorrow your girlfriend will leave you. If you don't have understanding, you will say, and I went to pray an half hour and problems are coming. Problems are rather living. The problem that left is the human being that sent you a message, I've left you. Because if he had continued with you, you will cry for five years in the marriage. After that, you get your divorce and you go your way and your life would have been wasted. Once you are looking for something else, no man will come after you again. Most of the depression, psychological cases, go to psychiatric hospital. We went to in Sawan prison, and the boss there was telling us that pastors, if you are preaching, preach more about marriages, because most of the the highest case that brings people to in Sawan here is marriages. Marital related issues. So it marital related issue is the highest cases in prison. It's the highest cases in psychiatric hospital. And you think we shouldn't deal with it? The top officers they said, 
pastors, you people should deal with marital issues. It's the highest cases here. Go to the court. Highest cases they are dealing with is marriages. Recently, the red statistics came, and Christians have the highest statistics of divorce. Me see, now coupon tam ya misugo fubi, unyansa fubi. Need your one tears here. Offer me shabon sam. Offer me shabon sam. Offer me shabon sam. Shout, I receive it. I receive it.